Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're answering a member question from Tom, who wanted to know how to cut or chop things in Cinema 4D. You can get your C4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts member at cgshortcuts.com or over on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So we're going to be chopping a cucumber in this example, which I'll supply with the project files, but you can use just about any object you like for this one. So let's grab this, and to make the slices, we're going to use a Voronoi fracture object. So we'll hold Alt when we bring that in, so it becomes a parent of our cucumber, and starts fracturing our object like so. But we don't want random cuts like this, we want nice even slices down the length of the vegetable. So if we take a look at the Sources tab of the Voronoi fracture, we get a point generator by default, which randomly distributes points inside our object, which is why we get random slices. So we're going to replace this with a spline instead, which should allow us to slice it up more evenly. So I'll just switch to the top view and zoom into our cucumber. Then I'll grab the spline pen tool and draw a line along the length of our object. Then we'll grab the Voronoi fracture again and delete the default point generator, which removes all the cuts again. Then in its place, let's drag in our new spline. And straight away, we're getting some nice even slices. And that's because if we grab our spline inside here, you can see it's set to give us an even distribution of points along the spline, and we can change the exact number of points here as well. So increasing this will give us thinner slices, and decreasing it will give us thicker slices. We could also change the distribution to something else, like count for instance, which will allow us to randomize the width of the slices, if you didn't want them to be so uniform. But I think for this one, we'll stick to even mode, and I'll give this 20 slices all up. And we'll head back to our perspective view. And now that our object's nicely sliced up, we can make it dynamic. So we'll grab our Voronoi fracture and throw on a rigid body tag. And we'll use the newer and faster version of the rigid body system, which is available in Cinema 4D 2024 and above by choosing this tag here. And if we were to hit play now, all the slices would fall straight down with gravity. So we need to set our floor as a collider object so the two can interact with each other. So we'll grab the floor plane and give that a collider tag. And now if we hit play, it just explodes into slices. But instead of having all the slicing happening at once, we want to slice this gradually along the length of the cucumber. So we need a way of animating the activation of the dynamics. So if we grab our fracture again, one way we can do that is under the MoGraph menu, we can use a MoGraph selection tag. So we'll click that. And we can now paint across our object to select all the individual slices. So if I was to select these first six slices, we've now generated a new MoGraph selection tag with our current selection. And we can limit our dynamics to only affect the selected slices by heading over to the dynamics tag where we have a MoGraph selection input. So we just need to drag our selection tag into there. And now if we hit play, just those six slices are affected by the dynamics. So using this setup, we should then be able to animate the selection of the slices and have them activate one after the other to make it look like it's gradually being sliced up. So to set that up, we can now clear the selection from our selection tag and to animate the selection, we can use fields. So we'll enable that and we'll remove the freeze that's in there by default because we won't be needing that. And instead we'll use a linear field. And if we zoom out, the linear field is quite large with a lot of fall off by default. So I'll move this up a tad. And down here, we can decrease the length all the way to zero to get rid of the fall off. And if we zoom back in, we're now selecting everything to the right of that linear plane. And if we were to grab the field, switch back to object mode and move this, we can control which slices are selected depending on the position of our field. So if we hit play there, just that part gets sliced up. Or if we move it over here, we can slice up more of the object. So to chop these one after the other, we just need to animate the position of this. So I'll start all the way down this end with none of the slices being affected. And we'll keyframe our field in this position, which I think is along the X axis. Yep. So set a keyframe there. Then we'll go ahead to the end of the timeline and move this most of the way through the cucumber and set a keyframe there as well. 
and I just want to make sure the animation is linear so it's a constant speed. So we'll take a look at the curves. And you can see by default we've got easing on these. So I'll just select all the keys and click this to make them linear. Then we'll close this and give it a play. And we've now animated the slicing. Although if we take a look at this from the side, the slices are behaving a bit strangely. And it looks like they're floating above the floor. So let's pause this and see what might be causing that. It's more than likely something to do with the collisions. So let's take a look at the collision tab of our rigid body. By default, the collision thickness is set quite high at 1.5 centimeters. But because our cucumber is at world scale and not very big, the slices are trying to keep 1.5 centimeters away from everything, which is why they look like they're floating above the ground. So all we need to do is drop this value down to something like maybe 0.1. And we'll try that. And that's looking better. And I might just frame this up again and take another look at that. These first pieces are slicing away nicely, but these ones are bumping into each other and looking a bit boring. So at this point, I might use a force to push the pieces out a bit as they're being sliced away. So I'll grab our animated linear field and we'll head over to the simulate menu where we can find our forces. And you could probably use any of these, but I think I might try the gravity force. So let's hold shift when we bring that in so it becomes a child of our linear field. And if we take a look at this and maybe solo the gravity force, you can see that we get an arrow pointing upward and that's actually the direction the gravity is going to pull toward. So if we were to play this now with it pointed up, the pieces are going to start floating as soon as they're being sliced off, which is actually a pretty cool effect, but not quite what we're after. So let's rewind this. And instead, I want the pieces to shoot off in this direction. So we need to point the gravity that way. So I'll just rotate this down here and around this way a bit as well. And now if we hit play, they're shooting off a bit fast in that direction now. And that's because our gravity is currently infinite. So the slices will just carry on heading that way forever. But I just want to give them a bit of a nudge in that direction. So let's limit this effect with a field as well. So to limit the gravity to just the point where the slices are being cut, let's use a spherical field this time, which is pretty big by default. So let's scale that down to maybe two centimeters. And because this is parented to our animated linear field, our gravity effect will now travel along the length of this and just give a little bit of a push to the slices as they cut away. So let's try it. Okay, it's definitely traveling a bit slower, but I think our floor might be a bit slippery. So let's grab the collider tag on that and I'll set the bounce to zero and increase the friction to one and try that. And that's probably slightly better, but I might also go into our rigid body and try giving our slices a custom mass. Let's just try a value of one first. And actually, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I like how they shoot away, but stay within the frame. So I think we can call the dynamics done now. So let's take a quick look at how to render this. I'll switch to my Redshift layout and fire off a render. And we've got a bit of a problem here. If I zoom in a tad, the texture on the exterior of our vegetable is looking good, but the interior slice faces don't look very cucumber-like. But I do have a cross-section image we could use on those faces already set up in another Redshift material here. But if we apply this to our slice geometry, it's not quite right. Firstly, the projection is way off, and secondly, it's being applied to the whole object and not just the internal faces. The Voronoi fracture does have a feature we could use to fix this though. If we go to the selections tab, we can generate a selection for the inside faces, which creates this tag here on our object. So if I grab the slice material and drag the selection tag into the selection slot of the material, we limit that shader to the correct faces of our object, but we still don't have the correct projection. And unfortunately, the Voronoi fracture doesn't give us access to the UVs of the internal faces. So there's really not a good way to do this directly. So we're going to have to do a little bit of a workaround to get these faces projected correctly. So let's pause the render for a second and rewind our timeline. Then I'll right click on our Voronoi fracture and choose current state to object. 
which creates a new null from the object and breaks all the slices out as their own geometry, which will also give each piece its own UVs. So now if we grab all of these, we can merge them back together as a single object by right clicking again and choosing connect objects and delete. And now that we've got all that as a single mesh again, let's take it out of the null and delete that. And I'll hide the Voronoi setup and we're back to a solid object again, which should still look good in the render. However, this is no longer animated or simulated. So to reuse our dynamics and our MoGraph selection system we set up, we'll need another MoGraph object. But rather than using a Voronoi fracture, let's put our new mesh in a normal old fracture object instead. And now we can grab our rigid body tag and the MoGraph selection tag and transfer those to our new fracture object. And if we hit play now, we still don't get our animation, but if we grab our fracture object and switch the mode from straight, which treats it as a single object, to explode segments, we can now see our MoGraph particles along here again, which in theory should mean our MoGraph selection should work on this as well. So if we hit play, we've got our animation back. So we'll do another render. And we now have pretty much the same thing again, only with the added benefit of being able to access the UVs of our slices, which are these circles here. So let's switch to the UV edit layout and we'll fix our image projection. Let's change to polygon mode and have a look at these UVs. These larger polygon islands represent the exterior faces of our cucumber, which was already UV unwrapped before we sliced it up. But to edit the internal faces, we'll need to select only these circles in the middle here. And I think the easiest way to do that is to grab the rectangle selection tool and select some of these faces and these ones down here. Then if we hit U then W to select the connected faces, we've now selected everything other than the internal faces. So now if we hit U then I, we can invert the selection and we can now move or edit these guys. And you'll see as we move these around, the projection is also changing on the interior faces of our slices. So this needs to look like a cross section of a cucumber. And I've got an image of exactly that over in my text folder off screen here. And I can actually drag that into here as a preview. And this is the exact same image I'm using in the slices material. So all we need to do is make sure our internal UV faces match up with the shape of this to get the correct projection. And I can actually make all of these faces conform to a shape of a circle by using the boundary to circle command over here which puts all those faces a lot closer to the image. And over here in the viewport, you can see that the projection is already looking a lot better. So it's just a matter of tweaking this now until it's perfect. So we might be able to use the UV transform tool for this, which allows us to move and transform the faces. And holding control, we can also deform them a bit as well to make them match the image a bit closer. And you can see things are gradually looking better over here as well. So I'll just make a few tweaks to this and get it matching the shape as close as I can. And I think about there looks good. So we'll switch back to the standard layout. And if we play this, we now have a completed chopping animation with a correctly projected internal texture as well. So at this point, we could grab the rigid body tag and cache the simulation which will lock in the sim and allow us to quickly and easily play through the animation. So for the finishing touches, we could add something to cut this with or grab a knife from the asset browser where there's a few free with Cinema 4D that we can choose from. Then it's just a matter of animating this in a chopping motion along with your slices to match the animation. After which you'll end up with something like this. And I did a few versions of this as well, which I'll make downloadable on our website if you'd like to see how those were done or use them in your own projects. But that is about it for this one. If you found this video useful, feel free to leave a like or a comment down below. And if you need a bit of extra help with Cinema 4D, please do get in touch or become a CG Shortcuts member, which gives you access to all of our premium C4D training and resources. Just head over to cgshortcuts.com or visit us on Patreon. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next time.